Hi everyone, this is Madan. I would like to share my experience about implementing the goal directed provision in managing BV ECMO. I have been following this for quite some time and the results are quite satisfactory and I would like to share it in detail with you all in this small video. Dr. William Schumacher introduced goal directed therapy with his initial publication in 1988. He reported a trend of decreased mortality following high-risk surgery when uh, focusing on certain critical values. He used the term supranormal values to describe the elevated levels of cardiac index, oxygen delivery, and maximal oxygen consumption seen in the survivors. Later, Dr. Marco Renussi and Dr. Philip D. Sommer suggested values or parameters for perfectionists to take into consideration for patient care while they are performing goal-directed perfusion. Let us quickly learn about what is VV ECMO. In venovenous ECMO, the perfusate blood is returned to the venous circulation and mixes with the venous blood coming from the systemic organs, raising the oxygen content and lowering the carbon dioxide content in the right atrial blood. This mixed blood passes into the right ventricle, the lungs and into the systemic circulation. The advantages of employing BV ECMO are the oxygenated blood entering the pulmonary circulation may reduce pulmonary vascular resistance and thereby improving the right heart function while oxygenated blood reaching the coronaries may also improve the left ventricular function. Hence, BV ECMO is a potentially viable option for primary respiratory disease with cardiac dysfunction as a consequence of respiratory impairment. The volume of blood removed is exactly equal to the volume of blood reinfused. So, there is no net effect on central venous pressure, right or left ventricular filling or hemodynamics. The systemic blood flow is the native cardiac output and it is unrelated to the extracorporeal blood flow. Goal directed perfusion can target individual patient requirements by making focused micro level adjustments based on the needs of a specific patient. Individualized patient care is critical in reducing the mortality. It takes into account real-time values of the patient and notifies us when critical values are trending outside their accepted range. GDP allows perfectionists to improve the patient management scientifically with evidence-based treatment in a more proactive manner rather than identifying the outlying parameters when reviving the patient record following the procedure. Goal directed perfusion provides a new opportunity to improve patient care during the critical period of ECMO support with the proven threshold values and accuracy by increasing the successful outcome of the patient. Now let us see how ECMO is managed traditionally without a goal directed perfusion and how it is managed with goal directed perfusion. The ECMO blood flow rate is approximated between 3 to 5 liters per minute. Recirculation is assessed by the color of access and return lines or by checking the position through chest x-ray. Hypoxia is addressed by adding PRBC or by increasing the ECMO blood flows. CO2 correction is done by approximately adjusting the sweep gas flow. Venous chattering is managed by adding blood products or fluids until the chattering stops. Oxidative failure is assessed by visually checking for clot formations and post-membrane PO2 through ABG values. Cardiac output is measured by thermodilution measured cardiac output using Swangans catheter invasively. Now let us see how this ECMO therapy with GDP is being followed for the same parameters. ECMO blood flow rate is calculated according to the calculated native venous flow. Recirculation is calculated using the accurate recirculation factor. 
Hypoxia is managed by calculating DO to VO2 ratio and accordingly increasing the DO2 to address hypoxia or by calculating ECMO blood flow by cardiac output percentage and accordingly adjusting. CO2 correction is done by sweep gas flow calculation for precise value of required PCO2. Adjusting the fluids if pre-member pressure is more negative than in the range of minus 70 to minus 100 millimeter mercury for managing the venous chattering. Oxygenative failure is assessed by calculating the delta P. Cardiac output is assessed by mathematically determining the total cardiac output non-invasively using the blood gases. Why goal directed perfusion? or extracorporeal circulation is not adopted by all is because of its complexity which is a myth as you can see there are n number of formulas derived in various journals and publications but we are going to simplify the gdp calculation for everyone to practice and adapt easily the major determinants for successfully managing the vv ecmo is by keep keeping the ECMO recirculation less than or equal to 30 percentage by maintaining oxygen delivery oxygen consumption ratio greater than 3 and by keeping ECMO blood flow by cardiac output percentage greater than 60 percentage and also by maintaining physiological PCO2 level. Recirculation is defined as the fraction of oxygenated blood which is infused into the right atrium and subsequently aspirated back into the venous line of the ECMO circuit. The formula for calculating the recirculation factor is given here. We need an input of uh, saturation of blood entering the oxygenator, the saturation of blood leaving the oxygenator and the mixed venous saturation. SVO2 can be measured from internal or external jugular vein or other peripheral veins but it might reflect the local circulation and may not be reflecting the overall systemic circulation. Ideally SVO2 will be the same of uh, pre-saturation of blood entering the oxygenator when sweep gas is turned off and ventilator is used to achieve an adequate saturation. The acceptable recirculation factor should be less than or equal to 30 percentage. The factors that can affect the degree of recirculation are pump speed, blood flow rates, the direction of ECMO blood flow and the cannula type, size and mainly the positioning. If high recirculation percentage is noted, the following steps should be taken to decrease recirculation. Increase the distance between the drainage and reinfusion cannulas with a target separation distance of approximately 15 cm, which can be confirmed with chest X ray. Adding an extra drainage cannula to achieve more blood flow rate at a lower RPM. Placing cannula under echocardiographic or fluoroscopic guidance to direct the reinfusion jet towards the tricuspid valve. Now let's see how to calculate the DO to VO2 ratio. Oxygen delivery and oxygen consumption ratio is a standard means to determine if oxygen delivery and consumption is adequate in patients on VV ECMO. This calculation is so critical since the arterial PO2 may be significantly lower than the PO2 of a patient in ARDS who is not on VV ECMO. In a patient on VV ECMO, the oxygen delivery oxygen consumption ratio goal is more clinically relevant than the arterial PO2 in maintaining the tissue oxygenation for aerobic metabolism. The factors that can affect the DO to VO2 ratio are increased cardiac output, lower hemoglobin, inadequate ECMO blood flow rate, oxygenator failure, increased recirculation intrapulmonary shunt, inadequate sedation, hypothermia and sepsis. This is the formula for calculating DO to VO2 ratio. 
the acceptable DVO to VO2 ratio should be the greater than 3. To calculate DVO to VO2 ratio, we need to calculate oxygen content of arterial blood from the patient, pre-oxygenated blood and post-oxygenated blood, the native venous flow and total flow and lastly the oxygen delivery and oxygen consumption. Step 1. We should be able to calculate the oxygen content in this. The arterial blood oxygen content need the input of hemoglobin, arterial saturation and the arterial PO2. For calculating pre-oxygenated blood oxygen content, we need the input of hemoglobin, pre-oxygenated saturation, pre-oxygenated PO2. For calculating post-oxygenated blood oxygen content, we need hemoglobin, post-oxygenated saturation, post-oxygenated PO2. The normal oxygen carrying capacity is 1.39 ml O2 per gram of hemoglobin. However, due to the presence of abnormal hemoglobins such as carboxyhemoglobin and methemoglobin, this value is decreased to 1.34 ml O2 per gram of Hp in this calculation. The constant 0.0031 ml O2 per liter per millimeter mercury is the solubility coefficient of oxygen at body temperature. Moving on to the step 2, we need to calculate the total flow. Total flow is nothing but the total cardiac output generated. For that, we need the input of VV ECMO flow, that is what we are flowing, the post oxygenated blood oxygen content, arterial blood oxygen content, and the pre oxygenated blood oxygen content, which we already calculated in the step 1. VV ECMO flow rate is what we are flowing in the return cannula. The native venous flow can be derived from the values of VV ECMO flow rate and calculated total flow rate using this formulas. In step 3, we are going to calculate oxygen delivery by oxygen consumption ratio. These are all the formulas for calculating the oxygen delivery, oxygen consumption and the ratio. We should be maintaining the oxygen delivery oxygen consumption ratio greater than 3. And the cardiac output is typically elevated in patients with sepsis. This uh, 3 is to 1 ratio can only be maintained by augmenting the flow rate for the success of the VV ECMO. The most important determinant of saturation during VV ECMO is the percentage of ECMO blood flow to cardiac output, which is otherwise known as QE ECMO by QCO. The higher the percentage, the higher the saturation which can provide adequate blood oxygenation to the patient. If Q ECMO by QCO is greater than 60 percentage, the saturation will be greater than 90 percentage for the patient. The acceptable ECMO blood flow by cardiac output should be maintained greater than 60 percentage. The factors that can affect Q ECMO by Q cardiac output are high cardiac output due to septic shock, liver failure, hypothyroidism, or severe anemia, insufficient sedation and analgesia, hypothermia, inadequate venous drainage leading to low ECMO blood flow rate. And at last, we will see the formula for PCO2 correction. The acceptable PCO2 should be in the range of 40 to 60 mm mercury. You can note the formula for how to adjust the PCO2 during VV ECMO. Standardization of protocol is very important for the success of patient's outcome. This is my unit's algorithm for managing hypoxia during VV ECMO. I update this algorithm periodically if any changes are observed while managing VV ECMO. I would like to encourage all the perfusionists to develop their own algorithm as per your institutional protocol. This will ease the process for all the team members to troubleshoot during VV ECMO. This is for your reference.
so even a junior member in the team or can also easily manage the situation when it is required evidence based practice is a must for standardization of the protocols moreover we can't manage ecmo like a hit or miss scenario anymore if we follow gdp the outcomes will be improved since it provides an accurate prediction with real time values of the patient in future goal directed perfusion will become inevitable as all of our consoles will capture real time values and provide calculated parameters required open to all team members to refer so it is important for all of us to understand and adapt to evidence based practice to make my perfusionist community life more easier i will be soon integrating these calculations in my ecmo calculator app which is available for free in google play store as you can see in this clip it is now very easy to calculate and adapt goal directed perfusion during ecmos for better outcomes of our patients If anyone is interested in practicing these calculations discussed in this video you can mail me i'll be sharing the worksheet for your practice feel free to contact me for any more queries if you have on this topic see you in my next video thank you